Hey everybody, Tom here, otherwise known as Scary Spikes, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. Today I'll tell you everything you need to know about the Aegis Eclipse, but before we get started, just a few things. First and foremost, as we like to do at the beginning of these videos, is to give a quick shout out and personalized thank you to one of our amazing community members who also happen to be VIP Gold contributors. Today's video is for John Tenbeers. John has been with us for several weeks now, and he's a really amazing and animated personality to say the least. Uh, he's a lot of fun to have around in voice chat and on stream, and uh, just wanted to thank him personally for being part of the community and for being so generous, but also so helpful to our newer community members. I've seen him helping a brand new community member on his second day in the community and that really goes to show a lot about his personality and his character. So John, again, thank you so, so very much. It's very humbling and also um, just very pleasant to have you around. Love playing games with you and uh, enjoy having you on the stream. So thank you for being one of our community members and for being a VIP Gold contributor. Also, before we get started, just to let you know, we do stream on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So come on over and join us. We have quite a lot of fun on stream. We do different kinds of events and help out new players as well. Of course, you can also join our Discord, and both of those links will be down below. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by leaving a like, subscribing if you're new, and ringing the bell so that you never miss a video in the future. Well, without further ado, let's get into this video. This is the Aegis Eclipse. It is the quintessential stealth bomber in Star Citizen and has looks and a payload to die for. It carries three size 9 torpedoes and I would definitely upgrade those as well as some of the components on the ship but more on that later in the video. This ship can be had for a paltry sum of 3.49 million alpha UBC or 300 United States dollars on the pledge store when it's on sale. It definitely gives me some of those B2 Spirit vibes and has these amazing clean lines as a result of its stealthy armor. Because of its armor and its components, it can stay largely undetectable from approximately 3.5 to 4 kilometers away before having its IR suppressed. Again, more on that a little bit later. Let's land this ship though and have a closer look and see what we can see about this amazing stealth bomber that can take out a single hammerhead with but one size 9 missile. Let's start at the front of the ship. Again, the angular lines of the stealth armor really are pronounced throughout the entire design and really help to make it a formidable opponent when it's not able to be tracked down or scanned. It starts off in the front with a single pilot canopy that has its ladder and everything else hidden in this compartment here, which is a recurring theme on the ship. We make our way over to the right hand side or the port side of the ship you can see that there is a single GT215 Gatling gun. This is a fixed weapon of size 2, and there is an equal sized one on the other wing as well. And we can see that these wings fold up, which reveal the hidden landing gear as well within the fuselage to help the bomber land when it is refueling and rearming. Moving towards the back, there's really not much to look at except for a really well placed Aegis logo and some nice red pinstriping on the top of the ship. We see the two stealth engines that are in the back here that are hidden again very well by the fuselage and the stealth armor, as well as the Aegis logo on the other wing here with the other folding wing concealing the uh, starboard side landing gear. And finally coming back around to the front of the ship, we see the other GT215 size 2 fixed Gatling gun on the uh, starboard side wing. There's really nothing much else to say about this. There are three landing gear in total. We've got one on the nose and two, uh, one on each wing here that conceal. And if you can see down here, there is also a uh, bay that opens up to reveal your torpedoes, which at the moment I have none of. And there is a rotary mechanism that uh, moves the torpedoes around and makes them ready to fire. Unfortunately, you can only fire one torpedo at a time with this ship, but that's really not a problem, especially since most of the time the enemy will never even know that you're there. And of course, once they're dead, you can leave very leisurely and not worry about any backups being able to see you on your way out. The ship is really an amazing ship for doing all sorts of things, but my favorite things to do with this ship are to go and do the 87k bounties. If you don't know anything about bounty hunting, make sure to go watch my bounty hunting video linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. But essentially one of the best ways that you can make money with this ship is by working your way up the chain and getting yourself the Eckhart missions. Once you get the Miles Eckhart missions, 
And oh my goodness, we have an Idris mission right here. I think I'm going to go ahead and accept that and take, <laughs> take the Eclipse out to do the Idris mission. But ideally, what you want to do is you want to get yourself these group missions. What you're looking for is the 87,500 UEC mission. This will give you 87,500 UEC plus bonuses based on how, how high your rank is within uh, the reputation that you have with Miles Eckhart. And of course, you can have other missions as well, but these missions are soloable in the Eclipse because all that you get are hammerheads. And in most cases, you do get two to four hammerheads spawning in each location, but you only need to kill each named target, and there's only three named targets in total. And sometimes you'll have one in Hurston and two in Crusader, or vice versa, where, where you'll have two in Hurston and one in Crusader. Nonetheless, this is a great way to make money and you can make a ton of money with this ship and you can very easily make the 3.49 million that it's going to cost you to buy the ship in UBC back in just a few short days if you grind away on those 87.5k hammerhead missions. Before we head out for a demonstration, I just wanted to show you how to very quickly set your IR to be suppressed, which is important if you'd like to remain as undetectable as possible. Note that this isn't 100% required, but it does reduce your visibility, so it's definitely recommended, especially since it doesn't really cause you too much trouble. Now, we've just used our afterburner, so you'll get an idea of how high the IR can be in an eclipse when you've used your afterburners. Also, we are trying to climb out of a fairly high gravity planet here uh, with afterburners on, and so this is going to be quite high. Generally speaking, though, you can get this to fall quite low once you're able to fly around in space and you suppress your IR, which you can do by clicking this button here. Once you do so, you should see that the IR drops off quite dramatically, and this will eventually drop down to about three and a half to 4,000, or possibly even less. At that point, you will be as invisible as you could possibly be, and you can only be detected by ships with superior scanning capabilities that are able to see within a few, maybe two or three kilometers of where you are. So this is a very useful tool to employ while uh, being in your Eclipse because it does make you uh, as uh, stealth as possible. And of course, you can also run stealth mode in your power, but it's not necessarily needed or recommended. I think I would just go with suppressing the IR, which is already more than enough. And uh, even without this, you are still extremely stealthy just because of the way that the ship has been built. Okay, so we'll start this uh, demonstration off by heading over to one of the rendezvous beacons. Now, this is for the 87,500 mission that we were talking about from Miles Eckhart which you will need to do a little bit of grinding to be able to achieve. As you can see, we have a hammerhead and we are approximately 12 kilometers away. If we stop, you can see that there is absolutely no movement. That means that he has not identified us and we are still able to see him. You might think, okay, 12 kilometers, that's not a big deal, but surely once you get closer, he will be able to scan you down and see you. Well, not necessarily. So this is what I like to do whenever I'm hunting hammerheads. And the first thing is, of course, you want to make sure that you have your 87.5k mission and that you're able to repeat it. Oftentimes, when your rep is high enough, you should be getting these missions quite often, and in some cases, even back to back. We're going to get a little bit closer here until we're within about 7 kilometers. At that point, I'm going to start locking the target, and as I said before, you can only fire one missile at a time, but thankfully with these hammerheads, this is all you're going to need. So we're going to go ahead and lock him up. And I'm going to stop the ship just under six kilometers away. All right, there we go. So as you can see on the bottom right hand corner of the HUD, we're about 5.8 kilometers away. And as you can see under the target, they still have not noticed us. Now we can safely move in another three kilometers or so, uh, maybe two kilometers without being noticed, but this is a safe distance and the Typhoon 9 will be more than capable of traveling about six to seven and a half kilometers uh, to be able to hit the target. So at this point, all we need to do is just go ahead and hold the middle mouse button, which will release our torpedo. All right. And at this point, we just wait. Now we're not too worried about any of the other targets here there are going to be other hammerheads that will spawn but there you go objective complete neutralize uh, the enemy and at this point we will be getting other targets coming after us but since they still can't see us we can very very easily just turn around warp away and not have to worry about combat with any other ships 
So here we are on the Aegis Eclipse part of the Urkel website. We'll be having a look first at the default build, which I'll leave a link for in the description below, as well as a link for the upgraded build so that you can follow along with me or choose the components that are right for you. So before we get started, we'll just have a look at the default loadout here. And then we can see we have a 636 DPS with 42 alpha damage for our pilot controlled weapons, which are the fixed size 2 Scorpion G215 uh, ballistic uh, projectile weapons. So these are Gatling guns. They can run out of ammo quite quickly. And to be quite honest, I would really not recommend fighting with these. The ship is really best suited to bomb and go and not really stick around for reinforcements to come by and do battle with by means of dogfight you're really not going to last long and it's really not what the ship is designed for but in a pinch they can be useful and they do provide 50 percent penetration to shields as well which is really quite nice additionally we have the argos 9 uh, these are the default torpedoes that come on board and that gives us a total of 1,265,058 damage we will be augmenting this as well by upgrading to the typhoons now moving down into the components, we can see that we have a selection of mostly a grade B stealth components, which to be quite honest, are quite fine for a stock loadout. And in most cases, I feel like this loadout is a lot better than most other stock loadouts on other ships. We will be upgrading these as well, though. We can see that these are all size one components, which is understandable for a ship of this size. We have the veil for the shields. We have the uh, Delta Max for the power. And then we have the vapor block for the coolers finally we have the drift uh, for the quantum drive and we will be changing this and this is the only thing that we're going to be changing to something that is not stealth the reason for that is because we'll be using it either prior or after combat when stealth is not really something that we need it's also not going to make a huge difference and by the time we activate it and get out of there it's going to be too late for anyone to do anything anyway so this is going to allow us to travel faster and also to have a much better range so that we can get to the grid a lot faster and also with a lot of fuel to spare beyond that there's really not too much that we can do other than perhaps select a livery so if you happen to have a livery you can certainly select it here i don't have a livery with mine since i just bought it in game but you may have this from the 2950 iae that happened last november beyond this there's really nothing else that we can change at least not at the moment and hopefully these are some things that we can upgrade and change around in the future well without further ado let's get into the upgrades so first and foremost i think i would just leave these uh here these are not ones that i would particularly like on most other ships but because of the fact that ballistic weapons don't have a tendency to increase your ir rating and because we have a tendency to want to suppress our ir rating when we're in the eclipse these are actually a really good pair and very good Good, uh, to have been selected for the stock loadout for the ship the next change that we're going to make is going to be in the torpedoes now unfortunately we can't change the rack as it is proprietary but we can definitely change it to a different torpedo so we're going to go with uh the other type of torpedo here the one that i was talking before and that is the cross-section typhoon 9 torpedo note that the uh, em uh, seeker is also quite nice but i do like uh, this one it also does quite a little bit more damage so as you can see we go up from 1.265 million to about 1.3 million in total damage and that is uh, with all of the three torpedoes added up so that's going to be my choice for that and then with regards to the components we'll be increasing these basically to grade a and keeping them stealth so for the shields we'll want to choose the mirage for both For the power plant, it's going to be the slipstream. And for the coolers, it's going to be snowblind. Honestly, I don't feel like the coolers do too much these days, so you don't really have to upgrade these. They can be a little bit of expensive uh, and a, of an upgrade as well, but if you do have some money to throw around, definitely uh, having these will be an upgrade, and uh, hopefully in the future they will have a more a positive uh, influence on the actual ship and on cooling but for now if you don't have the money you don't have to upgrade these the stock ones will just be completely fine finally we're going to go ahead and up upgrade the quantum drive here and this is really something that we can splurge on so if you're going short distances and staying within a particular subsystem i would recommend the vk00 
This is the military grade A, and it is one of the fastest ones available for its size. But if you're looking to be able to get on grid relatively quickly, but not burn up all your fuel, then I would certainly recommend going up to the civilian and selecting the Atlas. So the Atlas is very similar in size one to what you can get in the size two Crossfield. It's just a very good overall quantum drive. It's got a good balance of speed and uh, it also has a good balance of uh, fuel burn as well. So you'll find that with this, you should be able to get further than, um, than on the stock one and uh, you won't have to use up too much fuel to, uh, to use it. So you'll increase your range as a result and uh, it won't really bother your stealth rating since you will not be using it in combat where stealth is most important. Beyond this, there's really nothing else to upgrade. So that leaves us with, again, the same damage as we had before, the same DPS as we have not changed our pilot weapons at 636 DPS with 42 alpha damage. We have an increase of uh, 1,300,060 uh, damage as opposed to uh, what we had before with the Argos 9. And everything else uh, does improve slightly, uh, but it's not a massive difference. Really, the big thing that we're worried about is the torpedoes. We want to have a much better torpedo. I feel like the Argos don't really lock on very fast. In fact, they take quite a long time to lock on, so it can be quite annoying. Even though time is not really that important when you're not able to be seen um, but just out of convenience having the typhoons and having a little bit of extra damage as well uh, is uh, is definitely a good thing to have if you have any questions or if you have any of your own suggestions with regards to how you run your eclipse make sure to leave that information in the comments section below for the benefit of the whole community and thank you so very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please let me know by leaving a like you can also subscribe if you're new. We post new videos weekly and ring a bell so that you don't miss a video in the future. Also know that we do stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Twitch. Please go ahead and join us there. We have a lot of fun on stream and all of our, a lot of our community comes out to play and have fun with us. And additionally, of course, you can also join us on Discord where you can meet, chat, and play with all of our community members. Links for those will be in the description below. Again, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.